What's up, everybody? It's Thursday, September 19th, 2013. Thanks for tuning in to our show. It's called The 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. What's up, people? we got a great show today. Later on, I'll be chatting with Jim O'Hare, who's the star of Parks and Recreation. He plays Jim. I'm sorry, he plays a character named... the hell does he play? <laughs> Let's start that over again. The fuck's this guy's name? <laughs> See, <laughs> see, when you're not live though, yeah, it's, it's like great. you know, I don't like it. Yeah, but then we'll we'll do this over. And yeah, that would have been really bad. Over. Right, we do it over and over and over again. After you, you talk about that, right, I'm gonna bring real, up Espanol. Okay, real quick, just make just make sure it's recording because yesterday, I I got lucky and it wasn't recording and I just like put it on by accident. Why wasn't it recording? I don't know. It's there, it gave like an error message. Yeah. All right, that's fine. I'm I'm glad. We almost lost everything. Yeah, we almost yesterday. lost everything. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. Let's do it again. Okay. Okay. Three, two. What's up, everybody? It's Thursday, September nineteenth, twenty thirteen. Thanks for tuning into the 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. Got a great show planned for you. Later on, I'll be chatting with Jim O'Hare. You know him from Parks and Recreation. He plays a very lovable buffoon named Jerry. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll chat mm -hmm. with him for a little bit. Uh, we've got a really interesting contest that you should know about. Yes. Tell us about that, Justin. So today, CNET launched CNET Espanol. We've been talking about this for a little while, but we're all really excited at the launch. If you go to CNET.com slash ES, you'll be directed to the CNET Spanish page, and that has a bunch of our classic reviews uh, translated in Spanish. These aren't just Google translated. We actually have people here mm -hmm. um, translating them themselves. And to celebrate the launch of CNET Espanol, we're actually running a Mucho Dinero Sweeps. I'm not just using my own Spanish there. That's what it's called. Mucho Dinero Sweeps. So all you got to do is, and we'll put a link to this in the um, show notes today. So go to CNET.com slash the 404. All you got to do is pretty much just enter in your email and a couple more details about yourself. And you'll be entered for a chance to win $5,000. Wow, that's like a lot more. That's a lot more than four hundred dollars Than our contest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this one's backed by the entire that's, company, not just our own pocket cash. That's true. Yeah. We don't have to bum quarters anymore at the bus stop. <laughs> yeah. All right, so enter that contest. That's a, I mean, five grand, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mucho dinero. I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, uh, for our Spanish-speaking listeners, the 404 show will be subtitled in Spanish <laughs> moving forward. It'll be live dubbed by live Sally, dubbed. who will be in the studio with us. Oh, okay. Man, that's not the worst idea we've ever yeah, had. Totally. Be great. Oh, my goodness, that's great. So it's kind of crazy what they're doing with uh, CNET Español. Yeah. They've taken... A lot of videos and they've reshot them yeah they've taken a bunch of our reviews and our articles and they've translated them into uh, Spanish haven't gotten hit up for any printer reviews to be translated yet you think I'm at the bottom of that totem pole well, or what no because people who speak Spanish simply don't print yeah okay mm -hmm. and you were left out of that conversation nobody <laughs> prints anymore it's not just the Spanish speaking people <laughs> I don't know why you want to like proliferate that sort of mantra because that puts you job. out of work, right? Now, this is my job. Oh, is it? You have Hopefully. a funny way of showing it. Hopefully. You have a funny way of showing that. <laughs> I could use the 5000 myself. Unfortunately, CNET employees are not eligible to enter. Uh, but you are, if you're not a worker for, for, uh, for CNET. Just go to this website, and we'll post a link to it. It's actually just your email, first and last name. Incredibly easy. Free $5,000. Wow. And then uh, you already have a CNET account set up, so, which means you can also post comments and you know things like that. It's All a right. great idea. Gracias, mi amigo. Oh, my God. <laughs> no one Whoa. asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> did you take Spanish in high school? I did. Yeah? Yeah. I, I understand it much better than I speak it. Yeah. Yeah. And I read it much better than I speak it. Right. I probably can... I'd probably be able to get through a vacation yeah. in a Spanish-speaking territory. Mm-hmm. But 
I, it wouldn't be my proudest moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed. My I Spanish think. is pretty terrible, too, and I feel bad because I grew up in Orange County and then moved up to San Francisco, where there are a lot of Spanish-speaking yeah, totally. people, and I still, I'm terrible at it. And now you live in Nueva York. Yeah, yeah totally. So, what's your excuse no now, excuse, guys? Just ignorance. I just yeah. like saying I know about seven and a half percent of the language. Yeah. Which is nothing. Man, I'm half Dominican, and I don't know any Spanish. Yeah, what's, what's, your, what's the deal with that, man? I grew up... In California, on my Filipino side. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, none of that? No, no Dominican. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can learn something from Sally. We should get her in here one of these days. She's uh, she's one of our new employees that got hired to work on CNET Espanol. Yeah. Let's get her in here. Maybe she get gave us me a good tip on learning Spanish to speak lesson. Spanish. She's like saying, watch your favorite movies mm -hmm. in Spanish with English subtitles. Oh. Oh, yeah. that's a great so idea. I'm going to try that someday. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, that's good. I just got to watch all the movies in English first. Yeah. yeah. What? Really? Yeah, there's so many movies I just don't I haven't watched. Yeah, but you would watch it in English and then just read the Spanish subtitles. Mm. Or no, you, you she said watch it in Spanish with English subtitles. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, right. Who she wants to hear, hear Ron Bur like some Spanish dude doing a Ron Burgundy <laughs> accent? I don't want to watch yeah. that. Do you? Yeah. I want to see Tommy Boy in Spanish though. That, that would be hilarious. Oh, <laughs> that would be excellent. That'd be good. Have you seen Casa Gordo? What would, would fat guy in a little coat be? Like uh, Gordo, Gordo Hombre and Pequito. Pequito, whatever <laughs> coat is. Coat. <laughs> Don't say Codo. It's not Codo. I know it's not Codo. It's not El Codo. Have you seen Casa de Mi Padre? It's My a dad's movie. House? Yeah, it's a movie that See, came out Spanish? in 2012, <laughs> starring Will Ferrell. You haven't seen it? Oh, I've heard. He, it's all Spanish, right? It's all in Spanish. Yeah, who, someone it's else on is... Netflix right now. So if you have an account, you should go watch it. I put it on just thinking that it was another Will Ferrell movie. I'm like, yeah, I'll just try this out. And he starts speaking Spanish right from the start. There's no English at all in it. Mm. I thought it was a joke. And then I fast forwarded <laughs> to like an hour into the movie. He's still only speaking in Spanish. <laughs> it's like an entire movie just trolling you. It, it's so ridiculous. But is it good? It, it's terrible. Why? Because Even you... though the cast is really good. It's got Diego Luna in it. It's got um, Gail Gustery Bernal. Um, Nick Offerman, who's a really funny stand-up. I love his stuff. But the movie is awful just because you can't stand listening to Will Ferrell speak Spanish constantly. <laughs> is it because you don't buy his accent? Yeah, I don't buy it at all. Yeah, It's really ridiculous. You should go watch is it. Is it like he's not even trying? Yeah. Well, yeah. he's trying really hard, but I just the entire time you expect him to just break and start laughing yeah, or something, yeah, yeah, and he yeah, just yeah. never does that. I think that's what makes it awkward. <laughs> okay. I'll have to check that out. All yeah. right. Uh, we got a few stories, and then we'll get to uh, our uh, little chat with uh, Mr. O'Hare. First, yeah. what do you got for us? Man? Ooh, I want to talk about this. So uh, remember a couple months ago you were telling us about a creep shot that you caught in action on the New Jersey Transit? Uh, right, in the on past, the path yeah. yeah. I found some uh, a-hole taking creep shots of a lovely lady across the way. Yeah, and he was using his the cell phone, um, the camera on his cell phone to take it, right? Which is how you, you could tell you look down at his phone. Right. Well, if this guy had the sly phone, maybe he never would have been caught. And that's the product <laughs> that I wanted to highlight today. Oh, my God. I know what this is. It's crazy. Because I own one. You do not nope, own one. I'm not there <laughs> you yet. You will after you hear about this, though. Yeah. So sly phone it's a project by two artists, and basically what it is is a single mirror that's a laser-cut periscope that you fit on top of your iPhone, right? And here's a picture of it right here while we're talking about it. It fits onto your iPhone and then redirects your camera 90 degrees. So if you have it horizontally, it'll take um, a photo in the same plane across from you um, without drawing attention. So this is basically so that you don't have to hold your phone up and vertically, you know, so you can point the camera at your subject. So this basically, is a way to hide your photos. It, long story short, it takes the selfie front-facing camera, right. and makes it your rear-facing camera essentially, or 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 you know, sh place shifts it so that it's not obvious when you're trying to photograph. Somebody. Yeah. So or say you're something. sitting on the subway, you can have your phone down like you're reading, but then it'll actually be pointing your camera at the person across from you. I'd still be skeptical of somebody with a contraption like with that attached to their, their freaking phone. phone. Yeah, it's clear that it's on top of the front It's like a periscope. Camera. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of a good idea. And I, I think we should also point out that you could use the Sly phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Sly phone for things other than creep shots. It's a good name, you know, too. You could definitely take those upskirts. But really, it's more oh, for things dude. like <laughs> it's more for things like videotaping the cops. You know, how, how often have you seen... Uh, first-person shots of cops shutting down people taking photos or video of a of a crime scene. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you could you could do that to sort of keep them in check. Or something more. Justin's, in- like, all you want to do is, like, destroy cops. That's, like, all you want to do. What are you do. talking about? I feel like all you always are like, yeah, and you could, photo, you could photograph cops with that. There's no reason not to. They work for us. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah, that's that's what this is invented for. I mean, I'm, just, I'm not <laughs> defending police. It's just like, God, you got to pick your battles. Man. I know, but still, well, the reason why is because all I've been watching on the TV is New York One. And the only thing they talk about in New York one is stop and frisk. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And the amount of times that you've been stopped and frisked. Yeah, every is day. Zero. No, no, right. I've never done that. Before. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so there's other reasons to sort of take a photo on the sly. Like, for example, street photographers. I don't know if you ever look at fashion blogs or whatever, but street photography is a big thing, and a lot of times you can catch someone just, you know, walking around without actually posing for a shot. Yeah. And that could be kind of good. Okay. Or. If you see something crazy on the subway, maybe not a girl's underwear, but like, I don't know, a rat climbing up a homeless guy. You know, like we saw that video a long time ago. Uh-huh. And you could easily capture that without anyone noticing. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So anyway, you- so they compile all the shots um, that people take using the hashtag Sly Phone. So if you look that up on Twitter, look, these are all the photos that people have taken surreptitiously. It's a lot of people sleeping on the subway, which I think is really funny. <laughs> That's a tumbler right there. Yeah, right, totally. <laughs> Asleep on the end train. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Uh, speaking of subway trains, apparently we're getting cell phone service. Yeah. Is this a thing? Yeah, so this is really cool. Um, yesterday, the New York Times, uh, they published an article that basically uh, showed the first acknowledgement of the MTA's uh, uh, ambition to sort of go beyond the subway platforms for cell phone and Wi-Fi service. And there's really no timeline for it yet. They just announced that they're planning on doing it. So pretty soon, sometime in the future, uh, you'll be able to use your cell phone and make calls both on the platform and inside the cars where you're traveling. I need someone who knows their way around setting up cell phone service. We need someone who maybe like installs the bays. Engineer, this yeah. can't be that hard. It cannot yeah. be that yeah. hard. Yeah, if you can have it on an airplane, you can definitely have it on a cell phone. Well, there's no cell phone service on you know, you're too high up, right? Yeah. But they well, have, they have Wi-Fi, phones. But they have, and they have Wi-Fi. Right. Right? That seems more complicated than wiring up a subway station. Right. Or subway tunnels, rather. Yeah. Right. It's just get ready for the worst time of your life. You right? know, I was thinking about that, and I feel like it's probably everyone's first reaction to say, oh, man, people are going to be talking really loudly on yeah, the subway. Think about all the trains that are above ground But I'll that also, don't have that problem. Right. Like, that's what I was going to say. And then also... Subway cars aren't the quietest places you can go in New York anyway. It's yeah. always really loud. Yeah. So it's really not going to be any difference, right? Someone talking to somebody next to you versus on the phone. It'd be nice to What's text somebody, though. It'd be nice to text somebody. It'd be nice to, like, look at a map that's yeah, connected sure. to Google or oh, something yeah. like that. That's Definitely. what it would be nice for. And it would also be nice because I think security would get a bump as well. How right. many times mm-hmm. you're on the freaking subway and it's like, if you see something, say something. Mm-hmm. Well, who the hell am I telling? Yeah. Right. Underground. They read off this number, and you're like, good luck. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. When you survive everything, mm-hmm. make sure to go out the nearest exit and call this number. Yeah. I don't understand that. You know what would be really cool is if they pushed announcements um, onto your phone if you were on the Wi-Fi network. Yeah, that'd be because great. You, so many times you just can't hear mm-hmm. when they bypass certain stations or yeah. there's construction going on. It'd be cool to get a notification. Right. Um, I also think they should uh, sort of do a quiet car like they do on the Metro North. So we have this other public transit system in New York that takes you to the, um, you know, like upstate and things called the Metro North. Mm-hmm. And it's more like the BART train, sort of like uh, luxurious cars with oh, padded okay. seats and stuff, and you can drink on them. But uh-huh. one of the cooler things about the Metro North is there's one special car that's called the quiet car. And you're not allowed to talk, you're not allowed to use cell phones or anything inside that particular car. And it's sort of like policed by the other riders, um, which I think is really cool. I'm thinking that maybe when cell phone service comes to subways, we should have that too. Okay. Yeah. yeah sure, cool. because I just I don't know how practical that is. <laughs> Do you, no way anyone would ever follow those. It's rules. just yeah, like what you know. How long traffic. am I on a subway where I need to maneuver the car I'm in to but, get to the silent car? No, no, that's true. But wouldn't it be great <laughs> if nobody was <laughs> talking at all? a trip to all? DC. It's like a trip up twenty blocks. Think about the last time you were hungover. How much would you pay to go into a car that was complete silence? I don't get hungover. Oh, okay. I drink water. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's the trick. <laughs> you freaking binge drink water. Do you guys have any good subway stories? I mean, as long as we're talking about this so much. I mean, Ariel, you've been here for a little while now. Yeah. I feel like every New Yorker has their nightmare subway story. I mean, have you seen anything crazy? It's the usual, like, homeless man taking up a whole, 
grow and smelling up the whole cart. <laughs> right. Yeah, of know? course. And yeah. then no one notices until they step in, and then it's like, they're just oh, like, oh, no. Lord. And you gotta wait one whole stop to run to the next. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the usual. I haven't seen anything too crazy. Q game and stuff. I don't. Yeah. You know, I've been here my whole life for the most part. And yeah. I've never really seen anything that crazy. On really? The subway. I'm surprised. I've seen like that. people fight. I've seen a couple stabbings. Yeah. I've seen people like hit on each other on the subway. I always like seeing that. Yeah. I, you know, it, I see a lot of I see a lot of unwarranted and unwanted, um, you know, sort of like courting people. You mm. know that, and that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's when I, uh, I would call somebody, but I can't. Yeah, because there's no service in the subway. <laughs> Just gotta rely on your fellow travelers. That's it. Be good, good Samaritans. Samaritans. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it doesn't you, happen. You want to hear a crazy subway story that a friend of mine told me the other day? Okay. Yeah. Apparently, this happened to her, and I don't know if it's true, but she says it is. Um. So one time she said she said she was on a train sort of riding it late at night, right? I forget which number it was. But uh, she walks into a car that's empty except for one young sort of normal looking guy that was on the opposite side of the train. And then um, there was a group of three people um, that she actually sat across from, right? It was two guys on the end and then a girl sandwiched sort of in the middle, right? And as she's sitting across from these people, she kind of notes that it's it's sort of weird because they're sitting really closely to each other, and they're also all wearing sunglasses. Okay, mm. this is strange. Yeah, and they're also not saying anything. So she kind of took note of this and was like, that's kind of weird, right? That's weird. That is weird. So as she's sitting in front of these people and the train is going, um, she starts noticing that the guy that was sitting on the opposite end of the train actually has started inching towards her, Ugh. you know, sort of scooting towards her. Oh, God, could you be any less slick? Creepy, right? <laughs> Slowly, he kind of like inches forward with each stop. He sort of goes one inch forward. And um, eventually he keeps doing this until he's actually sitting next to her on the subway. And he, at this point, he leans over to her and he says, hey, we need to leave this subway car right now. And he actually grabs her as the door is open oh my God, and takes right? her out of the subway Oh, car. my God. And uh, so he, they, he grabs her, and then they walk out, and as they're talking on the subway platform, she's like, what the hell? Yeah. What was that all about? And he was like, hey, I just needed to get you out of there because I want to let you know I'm a medical professional. I'm a doctor. Oh, no. I and don't like where this is I, going. I noticed through my training that the girl that was sitting across from you wasn't breathing. She okay. wasn't breathing, and I think those guys were just propping her up weekend at Bernie's style. No. Yes. No way. And nobody else was inside the subway car except for those three guys, her, and the the doctor that pulled her out. No. No. Way. That's too specific. That that happened. That happened, right? You can't make that up. I guess so. Yeah, she told it really well too, so I believe her. It's That's scary, crazy. right? If she made that up, she's she is certifiable. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, she's a certifiable sociopath if she made that up. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, I, she said she believed it because the woman across from her, she just wasn't moving at all. Oh and their God. shoulders were touching. So that's probably how they were And she was her doing up. like the Bernie face. And too. she was, yeah, she was, her head was probably. She was dancing down. to voodoo music. Yeah, exactly. She had a Hawaiian shirt on. It was weird. <laughs> Holy moly. Isn't that weird? No, that's, that's a scary so story. That's super scary. What time was it? This is late at night. It was yeah. so, late enough to where there was nobody else in the car. I don't care who you are. It's not an awesome idea to ride the subway after, I don't know, 1 o'clock mm -hmm. yeah. at night. Right. Although, if you're traveling within the city, I think you're fine. If you're traveling within the city, at least get a partner. Get Work on the buddy system. Yeah. Right? You know they have those cameras that are inside there monitoring everything? Oh. My question is, is there anybody on the opposite side of those yeah, cameras? Yeah, it's not like the camera morphs into, like, RoboCop and yeah. destroys the enemy. <laughs> right. It doesn't work like that. So when, what, if something is happening in progress, do those cameras notify the cops? Or is there somebody that's like, okay, I should press a button here? I don't know. I don't know what happens. Ooh. I feel like those are only designed to capture the crimes <laughs> and then... Be like, oh, we should try and prevent those from happening. Yeah, I have yeah, no yeah. idea. <laughs> Too bad she's dead now. Yeah, though. it's terrible. Yeah. I don't know what they're really for. Whew. You know what it is? It, uh, it's probably taking a page out of what they do in London. London is by far the most surveillanced city on Earth, as, oh, yeah? from what I gather. Mm -hmm. uh, there's cameras looking in every direction, everywhere yeah. you go, especially on their underground system. I've actually heard a lot of them are dummy cameras too, but it's designed to create the effect or the illusion rather right. that you're always being watched. Right. Very big brothery and and whatnot, but they have like record low crime and mm -hmm. really no one smiles there either. So <laughs> right. I don't know what's happening. Oof. To me, when I'm in this situation like that, I don't look to cameras to feel a little bit more secure. I always look to the other people around me to see if we can like team up together and and tackle and take whoever. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah. what I did with the. Uh, 
with the with the pervert on the path. Yeah, you gotta like announce it and then crowdsource your help. Right, for yeah. sure. So yeah. anyway, that's All my right. scary. I would team story. up with you and beat someone up, Justin. Thanks, man. And then after he kills you, I'd run away yeah. <laughs> and be like, "Oh, he killed Justin!" <laughs> like a girl, I just run screaming <laughs> in the opposite direction. <laughs> You'll never catch me. <laughs> <laughs> Gingerbread man. I don't know why from like exactly. Shrek, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, I don't know. I don't know where, where that's coming from. Uh, all right, maybe we got time for one more, and then we uh, then we'll get to our interview with Jim. Oh, okay, uh, so let's talk about a new Kickstarter. I feel like there's a new Kickstarter that we talk about every week, but this one's kind of cool. It's an app that hopes to crowdsource a database of dreams. Kind of sounds nuts, right? Well, it launched on Tuesday, and they're. <laughs> Okay, go, I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> Hold on. I let just, me finish before I you can't, start I, shit talking. It's just I always gotta laugh at this absurdity I know, right I now. Know. No, there are some practical uses of it. It's called Shadow, and uh, you can fund it right now by going to the Kickstarter page. And it was just launched. It's uh, basically an alarm clock that also records and shares your dreams in a database. And so what happens is you set your alarm, and then when it wakes you up, um, what happens is the app launches a built-in voice recorder after you stop the alarm. Gotcha. Bring it. That's so the then smart, it launches yeah. a voice app, so then you can just sort of dictate what happens to you, what happened to you in the dream. And uh, I know that's probably going to produce a lot of very groggy, weird recordings. <laughs> but um, what happens after that is all the data that you upload is then stored in your private dream journal. And Shadow, the app, will actually scan your voice recordings, pick out keywords, and compare that to other people's dreams that also submit to the database. Nah, that's weird, man. So, uh, you know, in, they sort of talk about how, imagine one day you can kind of, you know, see what people are dreaming about after election night or after something like the VMAs that was a big, that was a big pop cultural thing. Her dreams are the one private thing we have. Yeah. They really are the one private. Like, even what you do in the privacy of your own home mm -hmm. is still vulnerable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, for it, sure. But what's in your brain when you sleep? Yeah. That's all we got. Yeah. And now we're <laughs> voluntarily leaking out that super private information. Yeah. I would say that interpreting your dream is so subjective to your experiences, too. There's no way that you can compare your naked dream to somebody else's naked dream and then sort of draw meaning from both of those. You know what I mean? Like, you, you would have a better time. You would have a more accurate reading if you just thought about what you did yesterday to right. interpret your dream. Yeah, and also, dreams are you almost overwhelmingly personal, right? Yeah. Like what what you dream about, I don't want. It won't make any sense to me. Right. Well, apparently, there is dreams that a lot of people have, like right. the same dream, like the teeth Flying falling dream. out, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Right. Or like yeah. the falling and falling and falling and falling. <laughs> right. That dream. You ever had that dream where? You're in college or some school, oh, and yes. then you forget yes. that, to, like, you miss a test or you forgot to take a course and you can't graduate. Yes. Yeah. I've everybody had that. has had that dream. Or right. I walk or in late people. to class and everybody looks at me. Yeah. 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 They all look at you? Yeah. They all look at me because I'm opening the door late. That always yeah. happens. And it's me. common to have that dream, like, years after you've been mm -hmm. out of That's school, strange. which I've had. Yeah. yeah. Really? It's so weird. Yeah. Man, I have no reoccurring dreams. I have really? no dream that I have all the time. Do you? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one? I don't really remember my dreams a lot. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's not uncommon. But yeah, the school one is a recurring one for me. I used to have one uh when I first moved out of the out of my parents' house, I would dream that I had won the lottery mm -hmm. and then lost the ticket. Oh. I would dream <laughs> oh, wow. about that over. Like I would dream about that maybe a dream like five times in a year. Yeah. About that. Mm. And you know, it's the worst feeling. You have that dream and then you wake up and you're like Shit, I gotta find that ticket. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then three seconds later you're like, oh wait a second. Oh my life Tragic. sucks. <laughs> That's a horrible setup to your day, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And you gotta wake like, up okay. from that. Yeah, it's just like my mind being like, Okay, Jeff, up and at him. Yeah. Go get him. Get mm -hmm. that real million. Yeah. That's a bummer. And uh, you know, I, I it was weird because like it would be a dream where like I, I knew I won and I told people I won and I had like news outlets interviewing me mm. and whatnot. <laughs> and they're just like, What are you gonna do with the money? And I'm just like and I just like grab all my pockets. Yeah, you know, you do that thing. Yeah, and I don't. I didn't have the ticket. Oh, you put it to the dry cleaners. And like everyone holding the cameras, they just like put them down. They're like, "We're yeah. out of here." Walk this, away. This schmuck doesn't even have the ticket anymore. Yeah, that's that. that what about sucks. you? You have a reoccurring dream about like I don't know, getting lost in the woods or something. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's a real life man. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I always have this flying dream, but it's not actual flying like in a traditional Superman sense. It's more of like a jump flying thing, like in the Matrix. You know how uh, in the Matrix he just like with one leap he jumps over to a different building. Yep. I have dreams mm -hmm. like that, except I can sort of sustain the flying, like I sort of sustain myself in the air by like 
swimming almost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is weird because I was a swimmer in high school, so I don't know if that had anything to do with uh, it. Probably. But um, it is a really cool feeling because then all my friends are there and I'm like showing off and like, hey, look how far I can jump. Yeah. It's a cool dream. But I don't know what that means though. Maybe it means I have lofty aspirations. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> that's strange being able to like swim in the in air. Yeah. I feel like the first thing that would really happen is they'd want to kill you and and, and then like, experiment on my yeah, body. Yeah, just be like, oh, how is he able to do this? Right, right. What kind of shoes is he wearing? Yeah, well, yeah. Is it the shoes? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what they do. Jordans, man. Yeah, that's what it would be like. <laughs> All right. You guys ever have any uh, sexual dreams? No, I've like never had a sexual dream. Like celebrity sex? <laughs> no, never. Never? Of course. Oh, who? Constantly. See, I think that's what the database could be really used for is who is the, the biggest pop about? cultural icon that has experienced the most sex dreams. Yeah. Skojo. For I want to know that. On the reg, man. Oh, really? And that's not, uh, I just said I have no reoccurring dreams. Maybe I've had her like twice. Oh, you've had her. <laughs> I've had her. <laughs> <laughs> You're nasty. That's gross. Jesus. Okay, I'm sc- yeah. I'm sorry, Skojo. It's not yeah. like that. Yeah. We, I was a gentleman and I was super gentle. Yeah. You're back, Jeff. <laughs> she's like recognizing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, welcome. Yeah, yeah. That's you, cool. You guys ever heard of lucid dreaming? Yeah, yeah of course. I want to. I want to do that. Where you consciously take over your dream? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we sleep doctor will be back here in early October. He'll mm-hmm. be able to talk to us yeah, about that. Yeah, I want him to take me step by step on how to do that. Yeah, he has. He'll do like a, a how to <laughs> yeah. on uh, I'm a lucid dreaming. Dubious about uh, lucid dreaming, right? Because yeah. you have to trust the person that says they can lucid dream. There's no way that you can see what they're doing, right? right. There's no right. proof that they can control what they're dreaming about, yeah. which is supposedly what lucid dreaming is. Yeah, right? but the, right, it. but but you can then confirm that you've been able to do it. If you do it yourself. Right. Yeah, but there's no way you, you can just take ever, somebody else's Well, everyone word. wants that, that playground. Everyone right. wants the matrix in their head mm-hmm. and right. just, you know, load up whatever they want. Yeah. It's all right. Well, <laughs> Scar Joe. Skojo. <laughs> Skojo. What's wrong with her? She's beautiful. Hey, she is beautiful. You just window shopping and you try something on. I try something on. <laughs> <laughs> and you're watching. You're gross, man. All right, we got to get out of here. Uh, stay tuned. We're coming right back with an interview with the great Jim O'Hare. Stay tuned. There's a lot more 404 right after this. Hey, welcome back to the 404 show. Our guest today is a very funny and lovable man who's been featured on countless TV shows. You know him for his current role on uh, Parks and Recreation as Jerry on NBC. Joining me on the show today, Jim O'Hare. How are you, Jim? Hey, I'm good. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. I, I'm, I feel honored simply because we are popping your Skype cherry, cool. as it were. And I beg of you to be gentle. That's all I'm saying. We will be gentle. It'll be just yeah. a small prick. And you won't feel anything, I promise. Well, you. I, yeah, I spoke to your wife. I know all about that. Oh, my goodness, he does. Hey! We, <laughs> we talked about our morning rituals. We already know way too much about uh, each other, but that's fine. Um, you know, Jim, in, uh, in preparation for this interview, I did a little reconnaissance work, I'm not going to lie, and I found out that you yourself got started in this business in somewhat of an unconventional fashion. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, because it sort of leads into another bigger conversation I want to get to with you. Wow, it has me nervous. I don't know what you've heard. <laughs> uh, you might want to lead me into what you heard. I heard you did a lot of radio. Oh, radio. Okay, I thought you were going to talk about the porn stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, where which, are my notes? Hold you on. You edit this, right? You get rid of that. <laughs> oh, don't just, worry, sir. Yeah. Yeah, that's gone. Yeah, okay. I'll just hit that edit button that I don't have. Yeah, uh, I had a lot of years, <laughs> big years, no pun intended, in, in porn. Uh, yeah, I did radio. You know, when I went after high school, I really didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. I went to college and thought business, like, I guess I'll be an accountant or I don't know. I, I literally had no idea, but there was a radio station at Loyola university in Chicago. And, uh, the DJs, it sounded like they were having a good time. And I was looking for a little extracurricular activity other than the fraternity, which of course was taking up way too much of my time. But um, I did, uh, I I got a shift there and it was really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. And then I, after Loyola, I went to Midwestern Broadcasting Academy where people with a voice can get a radio job <laughs> and people with the money to pay for the course. So, uh, and that's as it turns out. So, but uh, yeah, so I, I left there with a uh, three minute reel and sent it all over the country. And I ended up as a DJ in a little town called Rensselaer, Indiana. 
Where? What? Re say that again. Rensselaer, Indiana. And w it, it, where is that in uh, geographically speaking uh, in the state? In the state, it's near. It, it's not. It's only like two hours out of Chicago. Oh, okay. It's close to. Uh, not too far from uh, Lafayette. If okay. That helps anybody. Uh, St. Joe College is there. They have a pretty good basketball team. They were there. Um, that's the only activity in that town. It, it's very tiny, very sweet, but just a little tiny, tiny town. As a matter of fact, the, and the, at the station, there was this poster, and the owner was bragging about this, and the poster said, at any time, 12,000 people could be listening. <laughs> now, if that means that's the most it means like 80 people were listening right if 12,000 you know if you go by percentages sure about 80 people were listening right if we get a hundred percent listenership that yes. would be 12,000 12,000 people, people <laughs> that will is be some, listening to you on the air that is some powerful broadcast signal stuff right yeah that's yes, unbelievable a lot of power well yeah. Jim because you have an amazing voice you really do and, I, oh, and that was the first holy. thing no you do because you know, we do a podcast here and everyone talks about, you know, voice quality and, and stuff like that. And, oh, you have a, you know, that joke, you have a face for radio we get all the time. But what I'm curious about is how you feel about radio or, or necessarily the talk show revolution that's happening with podcasts, stuff like that. You know, it sounds like you got your start out in the business on that platform. What are your thoughts on it sort of having this, you know, sort of revitalization you know, this, yeah, this renaissance. Saying, yeah, I got to say, I love it because I'm a guy that when I did do radio, I wanted to talk. I, I'm not, I, I enjoyed the kind of music I like that most people don't, you know, he's easy, easy listening, but I'm old now. So it's, so I can admit it. It's okay to, <laughs> when, when you're over 50, you can say you enjoy that kind of music. I couldn't <laughs> years ago, even though that's what I've always enjoyed. So I'm not so much the music. guy. I love talk radio. So in my world now, podcasts, they're kind of everything unless i'm in the car and even then if i'm doing a trip i, I set up my podcast in the car um, i love podcasts i think they're amazing you're hearing everybody uh, people with a voice who you never would have heard if you know they had to get themselves a major gig on a major station can now be heard i i couldn't support it more i, I just absolutely love it and uh, as a guy who also has a face for radio i appreciate that uh, guys like us can uh <laughs> You know, have an outlet. So, no, I'm a big fan. Big, big, big fan. Well, that's cool. And not just the comedy stuff, though. There's some brilliant comedy stuff out there. I love some of the serious stuff. And there's oh, yeah. everything. The oh, podcast yeah. world has really blown up. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of it. That's awesome. So, are, do you have any favorites that you'd like to share with us? Obviously, besides, you know, your new favorite one called The 404 Show. But other than that, uh, do you have yeah, any? Sorry, what? Oh, wait, this is The 404? <laughs> yes, this is The four. Oh, yeah, we didn't, oh, we didn't get. Did we, did we get to that? No, I thought. I'm sorry. I thought this was high profile. Uh, I, you know what, my phone's ringing. I have. Uh, you know what, I, I might have diarrhea. I have to go. Yeah. That's no. never. A, that's always. You know when you have diarrhea. That's never. I might. That's never like. <laughs> that I might. You're right. Absolutely that is right. a binary situation. It's either on or off, sir. Yes. No. No. Of course. There's no finer podcast than the four. That's a. That goes without saying. Oh, thanks. Um, I love uh, comedy. Bang bang. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, um, uh, I, I listen to, though I ebb and flow on certain people, like you listen to them for a while and then you could be done for a little while just because too much of their voice in your head. Uh, but um, uh, uh, Jay Moore, I think, oh, is, yeah. is really funny. Uh, the, the Sly Brothers, uh, boy, I have a list in my that I just bounce around from. But right those on. are some of my top ones. Well, I invite you to listen to uh, the show where we had Scott Ackerman on. If you're a comedy Bang Bang fan, that was a that was a good time. And I had the opportunity to meet him about two weeks ago. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. He, he's and boy, too... did he have some things to say about you? Oh, I don't doubt that. He's too <laughs> he's too tall. I've decided. I've just I didn't like yeah. that. That was very intimidating. Yeah. It's off putting. It's, just <laughs> off -putting. <laughs> it's like, sir, please, you're making everyone yeah, look bad. Bring it down. <laughs> oh, cool, you're tall. We get it. We get it. <laughs> We get it. Oh, they all have these built-in advantages in this world. I'm <laughs> sick of it. Exactly. Um, I saw an interview with you a little while ago, and you were asked about Twitter and your presence on Twitter. And I, I follow you. Uh, I've, I've caught myself up in a lot of your tweets. Uh, you're a funny man. I want to know what you feel about Twitter, because in this interview that I saw with you, you seemed a little standoffish, like it was some sort of... 
uh, some sort of penalty you had to pay for being like a successful a chore, celebrity. <laughs> I'm sorry? Like a chore, perhaps? Yeah, like it was this extra work that you didn't really sign up for. Yeah, it's funny. I really... I can really enjoy it and I can really hate it. Uh, I, I wouldn't have even known anything about that. I mean, of course I would have heard of Twitter, but my, you know, my, uh, my publicist, the, you know, brilliant Rob Greenwald insisted that I do, uh, you know, a, a Twitter account. And he's a good so man. I, he knows what he's talking about, right? He's, you know, he's really, Hey, he's, it's his job to make me put me out there. So <laughs> I did. Um, it can be, I mean, some people just, randomly say terrible things uh which is odd it feels like a lot of pressure to me yeah like a lot of pressure uh i'll get things all of a sudden i'll get a note from people uh you haven't tweeted in two days oh damn I, you're right i hadn't even thought about tweeting in two, like, There's a lot of things stuff. i haven't done in two days i'll tell you that. yeah exactly <laughs> and some i have many times because it was much more important sure um, yeah, so no, I, I do have a love hate relationship with Twitter. It is great. It's a great promotional tool to put out there when you're doing things. I tweeted I was going to be doing this today. Um, so no, I mean, I, I do get the, the positives of it, but like I did a Bieber, uh, I, I did a Bieber um, parody kind of Bieber in 2051 for the Kimmel show last week, <laughs> and I have gotten death threats through Twitter. Really? Now, Granted, they're from 12 year olds. Right. So, you know, unless their scooters can get up my hill, I'm not terrified. <laughs> right. But, uh, like, people can just get to you, like, they can speak to you. Sure. Who you would never in, in a million years have spoken to or have wanted to speak to. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very powerful platform. And I think to, to, when I try to explain pe to people that aren't on Twitter and you explain that sort of intimate connection that you can make with literally anyone on the planet. They anyway. can, they're like, oh, well, that's, someone's got to be policing this thing. It's got to be yeah. regulated in some capacity. But it sounds like well, you're, you're, you're... I sit, uh, you know, we're in the trailer a lot between scenes, whatever. And I've gotten a little obsessed with Maury Povich and his paternity results. Oh, goodness. I admit it. You are or you are not the baby daddy. Right. So one day I tweeted, because my tweets are very innocuous, and they're just a lot of time promotional or just some little random, perhaps funny thought, at least in my head. <laughs> I happened to tweet... The girl is being tested for her 15th dude for baby daddy. I'm pretty sure that's a slut. <laughs> yeah. Well, holy crap. <laughs> did I get the barrage? Who are you to judge people? You don't know. Uh, your slut is a terrible word. And I, oh, and if it was a man, you wouldn't say it. No, I would. Yeah, yeah. If a man had slept with 15 women within like a, you know, what is it? A 72 hour period, you know, or whatever it is. Women can have these uh, eggs flying all over. <laughs> I would have said <laughs> the same thing. But Damn! Oh, I'm un I'm unfollowing you. Oh, well, those were daggers in the heart. Yeah, that hits so, home. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, but uh, fun too. So, it's amazing the 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 type of response you get. You know, you find out that what there's there's a slut organization of America, and they have an agenda against me now. Is that? And I'm we're... sure my sisters ran it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've been a great crowd. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, so I guess that's safe to say that, you know, is, is that the thing you dislike about it? Is that the negative sort of impact? There's a lot of pros. I, with all the pros come some cons. Uh, do you classify that sort of stuff that you can really just brush off as, as maybe something that you could do without? Yeah, I, I, but I've also been learning, which is good. People right. around me, you know, uh, Amy Poehler from Parts does not do it. Mm -hmm. She won't do it. She said, I, I will not subject myself to people randomly telling me I'm fat or unfunny right. or ugly, you know? So uh, you gotta let a lot of it go. But my other thing is I'm a little, um, I don't know if it's the words, probably the word is crazy, but I, I feel like when people do reach out to me through Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I feel I need to respond because they've gone to the trouble to send something to me, you know, whether it's, you know, whatever comment. So like, I'll have to spend hours sometimes. Yeah. Like, responding to all the tweets and i know that's in my own head i don't have to respond to every tweet like aziz from parks he has like two or a hundred million followers or something so he obviously cannot respond to everyone sure i i have sixty thousand, you know so let's say two of them are legit i got two people i got to respond to so i do no but i mean some days it could take hours responding to everybody but there's this I don't know if it's guilt that, you know, while they went to the trouble to get in contact with me, I need to respond. And then mostly they're really wonderful, sure. you know, so it's just something I do.
Well, you're doing it right. That's that's great to hear that you, you sort of interact with those people. If you want to follow Jim on Twitter, you obviously should be doing that. It's at Jim O'Hare, and that's O-H-E-I-R. All right, I want to talk. What's that? Correct. All right, right. I'm one for one today. Rock and roll. Um, I want to talk real quick about stuff like Netflix, and I'll tell you why I'll bring this up. When we've been having uh, celebrities come on, actors who are in TV shows, we talk a little bit about the proliferation of Netflix and what it's done and how it's really juggled up media and television specifically. Uh, A lot of shows are getting new chances on that platform. Uh, Obviously, Parks and Rec on NBC uh, entering its sixth season. I'm curious if you have a series in your heart that you would love to see get a second chance on Netflix. We saw what happened with Arrested Development. There's new shows like House of Cards that are getting a lot of love on Netflix. What show, what series would Jim O'Hare like to see? It would have to be Hello, Larry with McLean Stevenson. Okay. I'm not familiar with that. It's just desserts, even though you don't know what I'm talking about because it was from 100 years ago. And I'm joking because it was a horrible show. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was from forever ago. Uh, boy, a show that I'd love to see come back. First of all, let me say this about Netflix. I think Netflix, and I have no proof of this, nothing on paper, this is just my own little thoughts, is one of the reasons we're still on the air. Really? And I say that because, uh, you know, Nielsen's, Ratings have not been our friends. Uh, NBC is having all sorts of, you know, ratings troubles, and Parks is no exception. That being said, our demo- our main demographic are young people. That's who loves Parks. I mean, older people too, but definitely our main demographic are the younger folks. They are watching it on Netflix. They're not watching it in front of their televisions. We're not getting any Nielsen ratings from those kids. I, you know, I play Jerry on the show. I'm you know, one number eight on the call sheet. So I'm not one of the higher profile characters on the show. That being said, I can go into a college campus and people are running at me right. from all directions, That's you know, cool. wanting pictures and to talk about the show. So our audience is much larger than the Nielsen's would have you believe. And I think it's because now the networks are following Netflix and your Hulus and all these other options, realizing, wow, okay, they're always in the top 10 on that you know, on Netflix, they're always in the top five on this one. And uh, I think I think it's really helped. So I think Netflix has really put us in a better position. Um, so now, as far as a show that I'd want to come back, wow, there have been a You know what show I loved? <laughs> this is crazy because no one else will have loved it. Dirty Sexy Money. Okay. Just I, rem- I think I remember that. Peter what? Krause, uh, uh, there was a lot of people on it. And I don't know. I, it just... I couldn't miss an episode. No, so, that's a good answer. Yeah. Excellent. No, because that's what it's all about, because everyone has that one show that they yeah. just wish, oh, man, if it could just come back. That's a good answer. We haven't heard that before. Excellent. Um, it's funny you bring that up about uh, you know the, your audience and, and the Nielsen ratings and stuff like that. What I want to know is who is policing Nielsen? Why are, why, you know, it feels like their metrics have become significantly outdated, and I don't want to just attack the – standard for for you know measuring television audience but it seems like those numbers are getting fuzzy and and we're looking elsewhere i want to know who's looking out for that you know they, we need to do something about that i find that to be an under discussed sort of situation with tv i think you're right the, the the weird thing is how do you track but then that being said according to the government everything we say is being tracked right. so maybe there, there, maybe there is a system um yeah i don't know the problem the tough part is, and this would be advertisers, because without advertisers, you don't have shows. Sure. You know I mean? They're the ones paying the bills, sure. obviously. And since I make $2.5 million an episode, <laughs> it's expensive. Right. You know what I'm saying? That adds up. That adds up. Yeah, as the highest paid television A-lister, uh, <laughs> as I am, it's tough. And the advertisers have to get their share. But anyway, uh, all kidding aside, they don't... <sighs> Like, they don't really, you know, these kids are, they're all bouncing through commercials. No one's watching commercials anymore, including myself. Yeah. You know, I, I record and then I watch and I zip right through them. Um, I, boy, I, so there's got to be, yeah, there's got to be more policing of it, but I, I have no idea how that's going to be done. Yeah. I, I, no idea. Maybe we'll, we'll go back to, like, you know, the Texaco movie hour or something like oh that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Know, yeah. Maybe no, we'll, we'll be filling out diaries like they used to do. Right. Yeah, I think oh. Nielsen still does that. I'm not I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I heard, and I could be, don't quote me on this, 
since none of this is being broadcast, I right. can say. This. Uh, I think there's only 10,000 Nielsen families. And actually, there might even be less than that. Which like, is a reasonable this, share of the country, I think, right? That's this, Yeah, that's a reasonable <laughs> share, yeah. Like this little tiny, tiny, tiny percentage is what is putting shows on and off the air. Yeah. Uh, it's insanity to me. It's a, it's slightly terrifying. Better yeah. better we don't think about stuff like that. Well, especially because you know Parks had a rough start. Sure. We uh we were start you know we did six because we didn't do a pilot. Amy was pregnant and they said you know we love her and we want her so let's just do six right away. Well, those six like in any show, you find your footing, mm -hmm. you know. And after that, there was there was no pilot where they could then test it with audiences and do this and do that. We had none of that. We shot them. And, you know, then they did some testing, but they were already going to air. So there's nothing they could do. By season two, all the kinks had been worked out. And I think it's become an amazing show. And I, I think I can safely say going into season six, every season has gotten stronger. And from what's happening so far in season six, there's no difference this year either. I would agree. Absolutely. Let's talk about your character, Jerry, on Parks and Rec. I... You know, I don't like the way your character gets treated, and I think a lot of people share that. Uh, but Jerry is so good at brushing off the insults. I'm curious, as the person who plays him, does that mean that deep down Jerry is completely incapable of understanding how people truly feel about him? Or is he just 100% delusional, and maybe he needs some sort of, you know, examination? How, do, how does that work? I, I'm curious yeah. about that. Yeah, he certainly needs examination. Uh, there is no, I, I really believe it's kind of a mix because Jerry, and, I, and there's been episode after episode to prove this, but ultimately when the chips have been down, they have always had Jerry's back. Sure. Uh, there's an episode where Leslie, lit the, when the, the episode that, uh, that uh, Adam Scott and Rob Lowe were introduced, they are going to cut to the department. And Leslie says to Adam's, character uh, Ben no 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 we literally could not do this without Jerry you know so they ultimately have his back Jerry knows it and Jerry also knows this is nothing what matters to Jerry is what's after work and that's his wife and his kids right this is a place this is how he makes his money he has his insurance through here he'll have his retirement through here um, so can his feelings get hurt yeah but he can let it go knowing that and whether he's delusional about this or not and sometimes maybe he really thinks they think the world of him. He really thinks they do. And uh, it's been proven again and again on the episodes that when Jerry goes home, he's married to this amazingly beautiful wife <laughs> and these awesome. beautiful daughters yeah. who think he is just the, as the, as the kids used to say, the bomb. <laughs> um, you know, so they think he's awesome. So that's all that matters to Jerry. His family loves him and unconditionally, and they prove it to him all the time. So work is work. Uh, but I think Jerry deeply loves those people he works with, deeply. He does, even though the vast majority of the time people are just yelling at him and sometimes just insulting you for doing nothing. Which nothing. Is, uh... Or I've done something amazing. Yeah. Like, brilliant. I, I'm playing piano so... I'm just doing this beautiful <laughs> piano recital, and, and Leslie, ugh. Oh, damn it, Jerry. Oh, stop that noise. <laughs> I mean, they absolutely cannot see past <laughs> their... the fact that I'm their punching bag. It's, so no matter what I do, is awful. You, you, you know, you have an uncanny ability to react to the way you're treated by your coworkers in the show. I'm curious, wh where does that come from? Is there something that you can, you know sort of pull out of your, you know, life that you can sort of, uh, you know, throw out through Jerry? Where does that come from? Because you do it so well. Well, I, I, it's probably, you probably saw it on my bio. I took the, uh, uh, the, yeah, get ready for a bit. <laughs> I took the uh, uh, Charlton Heston uh, classes on uh, punching bag acting. <laughs> and uh, I'll be honest, I, I had to take the course twice. I didn't get through it the first time. No, I, dude. I didn't. I didn't. I'm, I'm, you know, we have our, we all have our flaws. I couldn't nail it. But by the eighth year, I. Only eight, only eight. Only eight. Something, boom, and it came to me. And ever since then, oh, I've had a little, I've had notes from Charlton. Uh, I haven't seen him in years, though. I don't know what he's been up to. No, yeah. But, uh, I still get notes from him, though. That's odd. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, 
I'm sure he's, you know, just retired or something. Very retired. Uh, I don't know. Just, uh, you know, I, I've played all sorts of characters over the years. Um, some people are like, boy, you're worried you're going to get labeled as Jerry. And I guess that could happen. Time will tell about that. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think that my history of work is proven I can do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just in me, I guess. I'm also, just as a person in real life, a bit of a I'm non-confrontational kind of guy. Sure. So over the years, I probably have learned how to let things go, you know, that should maybe not have been let go. So I don't know. Boy, you're really getting me here. You're getting me deep here, okay? Well, no, that's good. That's what this show's all about, I, getting to the root of Jim. I can't let it go. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's great is that your character has gone from, you know, the, uh, in the beginning of the program and to what it is now, to how important Jerry is to that formula of Parks and Rec is fantastic. Um, I'm curious, can you give us a little glimpse of what we can expect from Jim um, and Jerry in season three and season six? Yeah, season three, you go to Netflix. Yeah, that's a, it's there on the uh, Internet, Jeff, you yeah, big dummy. Uh, everything for you. <laughs> um, but season six... Yeah, uh, which begins next Thursday, a week from tonight. Wow, um, is uh, there's a, a game changer for J uh, for Jerry? Big thing, a big thing happens because right. um, you know I retired at the end of last season. Sure, Jerry retired. So imagine Jim O'Hare, the actor, getting the script that says Jerry's retirement. It's like okay, so take care, yeah, guys. <laughs> I was at the top of the building, just about to leave, <laughs> when I got a text saying that. No worries. <laughs> Jerry's not going anywhere. Nice. Uh, so uh, thankfully, Jerry's, you know, back. Um, and it's uh, it's tough because there's certain things we cannot reveal because they would kill us. Sure, yeah. So, but something does happen, uh, and it changes uh, pretty much everything uh, for Jerry. So that, I'm going to say episode, mm, that might be episode three or four. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, but overall, we're, you know, at the end of last season, Leslie was being recalled. Mm -hmm. So we are all focusing on hoping that doesn't happen. What can we do to make sure that doesn't happen? Uh, events are you know put together to make sure it doesn't happen. In the first episode, some of them are in London. Unfortunately, Jerry didn't get to make the trip. Mm. Yeah, one of the producers said, hey, first episode we're doing in London. I was like, are you kidding me? Cool. And he goes, well, the word we might be a little strong. <laughs> As in, we'll send you a postcard. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's an amazing episode. We're all in the episode, but a few of the people are actually in London because our amazing Chris Pratt, who plays Andy on the show, is becoming the new Galaxy America some damn superhero thing. So he's shooting in London. And Parks is such an amazing place, and it truly is to work, that instead of the producers going, no, 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 you need to be back here by August. This is, you know, we're all under contract. They said, we'll go to you. And oh, they wow. shot, it's an amazing place. It really is. So, yes, for the first, it's an hour long episode to begin with. And uh, it's in uh, London and also in Pawnee. It's back and forth. So Excellent. we're all in it. Excellent. Well, that's awesome. You're in that type of environment. That's, uh, it's that's, an that's special. It's truly an amazing environment. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Jim, uh, the best of luck with you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Again, follow Jim on Twitter at Jim O'Hare and be sure to catch the season six premiere of Parks and Rec on NBC September 26th at 8 p.m. Mr. Jim O'Hare, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for being here, man. Thanks, Frank. And this is the uh, the 403. So what's happening? What is this? So it's, this so it's Jeff, and it's the 404. Nah, no, I probably won't go Doesn't with that. work for you. So Bob, and let's say, let's keep it with Bob and the... Uh, Whatever your area code is. How about that? You know what? Uh, 818. Bob 818. <laughs> Fair Thank enough. You.